Hello. We're going to talk about Kali today. Kali is a mother. She's a mother cow. Bhura is her little baby boy. Kali loves Bhura to the moon and back, like any mother would. Like we love our children, like our parents loved us. Same emotion. But Kali worries about her son. She also worries about her own fate. Because Kali lives in the land of contradictions, India. Where on the one hand, we worship cows, we put their idols in our temples. And on the other hand, when we are done milking them, we chuck them out on the streets like yesterday's trash. Why are there so many cattle on the street? There are two reasons for it. One, temporary abandonment. When dairies, for some temporary reason, want to chuck out animals on the street uh, to save sheltering or feeding them, they would leave them to feed on garbage on the street and bring them back routinely for milking purposes. Or when, cat, when cows become sterile, they become infertile, they are not able to be commercially viable anymore, they are forever left out on the streets along with male cattle, which are of no use to the dairy industry. That's permanent abandonment. They are forever left out, they are deleted from the system of the dairy industry, and they become somebody else's problem. How is it a problem? You cannot argue with the nuisance that they put uh, us through on the streets when they are there. Accidents, what comes to mind is the Vande Bharat Express, a glorious train already met with accidents five times on the railway tracks due to cattle in Gujarat. Traffic obstruction, undeniable. Of course, crop destruction, when hungry cattle go rampaging in other people's standing crops, it's a loss. And there is pollution. 18% of the global greenhouse gases are emitted by livestock. These gases hang in the atmosphere for 150 years or more, and you and I suffer from it. Our generations will suffer from it. It's more pollution than all the vehicular traffic in the world put together. What are the solutions? So it's an age-old problem. It's a common problem. We can all uh, relate with it. But what are the solutions? The traditional solutions that come to mind are, let's blame the municipal corporation. Let's call their vehicle, and let's get the cattle picked up and sent off to a pound where they can be kept forever um, or till somebody claims them. That's OK. That's one. Or you can have a gaushala, you know, some kind of a non-government facility where it uh, runs on donations. Somehow cattle are kept there till the natural end of their lives in whatever conditions. But have these solutions worked? No, they haven't. Traditionally, over decades, we have taken the burden of the dairy industry and distributed them over other stakeholders. And they're not even stakeholders. They uh, have failed to provide shelter to lakhs of cattle which are there on the streets. In fact, our streets have become uh, identifiable. Indian streets, uh, Indian cities have a hallmark of having cattle on the roads. So these solutions have not worked. Let's go back to the drawing board and see where they're coming from. And probably there we can trace back a solution. What are the other possibilities? So who's making these cattle? Who is forcibly uh, multiplying these cattle? The dairy industry, of course. And shouldn't they then be responsible for looking after the, uh, the abandoned cattle, which is basically a byproduct of the industry? How many gaushalas or cattle retirement centers do any of the milk cooperatives or milk companies run? Let's look at that. But before we do, let's do a um, summary of the dairy industry and its size. About 200 million cattle, we are host to the largest cattle population in the world. Milk production is, again, around 200 million tons. Huge amount of milk production, most of it for export, of course. One lakh tons, metric tons of milk product is what we export to the rest of the world after polluting our environment. We sell it off. All right. Let's look at the financials. 
One lakh crore is the revenue generated only by the organized sector of the dairy, which is 60% of the dairy industry. Profit percentage, huge, from 25 to 55%, depending on which brand is packaging and selling the products. So it's not that it's a poor industry, and it gets massive grants. This is just one NDDB grant, which runs up to 1,700 crores in just in the past few years. They get land, they get international loans uh, all over the place, but no accountability when it comes to street cattle. What happens to the cattle which they keep inside? The lives of the, the cattle which are enslaved by the dairy industry are full of pain, stress, and hopelessness. No veterinary care, malnourishment, starvation, use of antibiotics which are non-therapeutic in nature, use of painful hormones, constant tethering, you know, you name it, sometimes vicious violence. And then other times, abandonment, which we all are witness to. Whether we care about animals or not, this bothers us. So who should be responsible for looking after the street cattle, the industry that is making profits with them, but still runs zero retirement centers for cattle? Any brand, they, they probably spend more money on advertisements on TV than looking after the byproduct that they are generating. Um, however, the polluter pay principle stands. This is a standard practice and a settled law which was uh, coined in Rio de Janeiro in 1992 during an environment summit of the United Nations. And it holds industries responsible when they churn out pollutants into the environment which are harmful for human health and the you know, the environment. But uh, taking that into consideration, the National Green Tribunal of India has held the dairy to be a polluting industry, a highly polluting industry, which produces effluents and odors which are harmful for human health and the environment. Also, poultry farms, these two industries, among other livestock, we're not even talking about aquaculture and piggeries yet, but we're talking just about dairy and poultry. These two have been held accountable under the Water Act and Air Act in India for the solid and liquid waste that they generate. Our question today is, what about the living byproduct that they generate? What about the male calves and dry cows that the dairy industry generates? What about the little male chicks that the egg industry does not have any work for? Do you know what they do with it? They grind them and feed them back to their mothers. So 40 crore egg-laying hens in this country, 40 crore baby chicks ground up, burnt, drowned, various ingenious ways to save money. And that's the living byproduct. Is it discarded responsibly? No. It's time we hold these industries responsible for what they're doing to the animals while they're using them for commercial purposes and what they're doing to the animals after they're done with them. And not palm off the burden to the municipal corporation, which ultimately falls on the taxpayers, or the animal welfare organizations, which have no resources anyway. So these solutions seems to be wrong. We have to rethink the entire problem and frame our policies in a way that we hold industries accountable. Animal agriculture is not agriculture anymore. It has been industrialized. So the same standards and the same yardsticks should apply to them. What can you do about it? You can ask questions because that's your fundamental right, Article 21 of the Constitution. You can raise concerns. It's your fundamental duty, Article 51 AG and 51 AH under the Constitution. And most of all, you can stop giving such industries any business. Move to a plant-based diet. It's good for your health. It's good for the environment. It's a sustainable diet, and you would be treading a little more softly on the planet. Thank you.